Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well. My name is Dhir Chaudhary and in today's video we are going to deep dive into two different kinds of prompt. The first one would be zero shot prompt and the second one would be Q shot prompt. By using this prompt, you can craft better prompts for AI tools like ChatGPT, Gemini, Cloud and Copilot. If you find this YouTube video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So guys, the agenda for today's tutorial is as follows. First, we would go ahead with the introduction of prompt frameworks, where we would understand what is prompt frameworks and how it impacts and how it helps. Then we will go ahead and talk about two different prompt frameworks. The first one would be few shot and the second one would be zero shot. Then we will be going ahead and uh, talking about the key differences between zero shot and few shot prompt framework. Then we would be talking about the benefits of these frameworks one by one. Last but not the least, we will uh, talk when we have to use this prompt framework, the use cases for which it can be utilized. So let's go ahead by understanding the introduction of prompt, uh, frame, uh, prompt frameworks. So prompt frameworks are like instruction that help AI model understand how to respond to your given task. Imagine giving a robot a clear recipe to follow so it can cook a meal or solve a mathemat mathematical equation for you. Why do they matter for AI models? Let's understand this because these frameworks are important as they help AI understand what to do without getting confused. It's like giving directions to someone who has never been to a place before. So today we are going to focus on two different types of prompt that is zero shot and Q shot prompts. So let's get started with our first prompt framework that is Q shot prompts. So as part of Q shot prompt, it means giving the AI a few examples before asking it to do a task. It's like teaching someone how to do something a few times, then asking them to do it on their own. With few short prompts, the AI gets a bit of training before it has to work. The more example you give, the better AI can learn and the best response you can get out of it. So over here, uh, we are trying to uh, depict the image. This is an AI generated image where I am trying to depict that uh, if you are uh, giving this examples and asking it to translate that into French, how it works. So this is our prompt, okay. And uh, the prompt says that translate the sentences to translate the sentences to French. Over here, I have given three examples. Example one is "Hello" is been translated to French as "Bonjour." "How uh, are you?" is been translated to French. Then "Goodbye" is translated to French. So this is the uh, question along with the answer. Then last, we are going ahead and asking the AI to generate "Good morning" for us. So that is how a uh, few short example works. Let's see this example in detail. So over here, what we are doing is we are saying translate the sentences to French. We have given the example and the answer, the example and the answer. Then we ask it to translate it to French. Now let's go to ChatGPT and see if it is able to understand and generate the output. Yes. So it says the answer for this good morning to French is bonjour. That is how few uh, short framework works. So let's understand it better by talking about some real world examples. So I have a good example for you where we will talk about it. So over here, this example is going to, the objective of this uh, prompt is creating a blog for a topic, which is prompt dictionary. Now you understood the topic. Let's talk about what kind of examples we are giving over here. So the first example, what, it's, uh, what it is uh, saying that, how do you structure a blog about prompt dictionary? Usually when you write a blog, you uh, uh, you know you can separate your blogs into different different uh, sections. First section would be introduction, second would be uh, context, third would be uh, the conclusion. And this is how you segregate it. So we are giving the example once where we are talking about the segregation based on which while it is going to generate the blog, it will keep in mind that it has to segregate it based on the structure. Second, it is how to incorporate SEO optimized keywords into a blog on prompt dictionary, which is our topic. So whenever we write a blog, we use some SEO optimized keyword so that when you perform a search onto Google about prompt dictionary, this blog should come up. That is how the SEO optimized keywords work. So what we are, we are giving a question about it and along with the answer so that when it is going to create the blog, it should understand that it has to create the blog by using some SEO optimized keyword. So when there is a Google search performed for this specific blog, it is going to go ahead and search it. Example three, 
how do you include an engaging example to explain prompt engineering concepts so whenever you write a blog if you have to relate with the audience you have to give example about what exactly you are talking about so suppose if right now i am talking with you about few short prompt i am giving you examples that helps you relate uh, with the concept so this is a concept and example this should be relatable so that the audience can understand what they are learning out of your blog so we have given this three as part of examples then we go ahead and ask chat gpt to create a blog for us so it says now create a professional blog about prompt engineering's significance in today's world using a conversational tone uh, that could be a interactive tone with the audience that you're targeting for including seo optimized keywords naturally and adding relatable examples so now based on the examples it is going to first learn what kind of blog it has to write then it will go ahead and write a blog for us now let me go ahead and run this one now for you let's see what chat gpt generates so see it generated with the title that is one of the framework idea then it has given the introduction over here and then it talks about the context what is prompt engineering what is prompt engineering why it is important and it is giving some examples over here in this and then it is also talking about its use cases where it can be implemented so this is how and last but not the least the conclusion so that is how few short prompt works now let's uh, see this with another example some another use case so first we used it to create a blog now we are going to use uh, chat gpt to classify the prompts that we are generating so over here what i'm saying is classify the quality of the following prompt as clear unclear or needs improvement then i'm going to give one example of each of them so the first one says explain the basics of ai ai is huge there are n number of concepts in ai it can be natural language processing it can be reinforcement learning it can be uh, object detection it can be uh, classification a lot of things so this is very unclear that what exactly you are looking for and it is going to give you any random output for it so that is the reason the quality is unclear second describe the process of training a machine learning model including data processing feature selection and model evaluation this is a clear response why whenever you write a machine learning model the first and foremost recommended steps are data preprocessing where you clean the data that you are going to feed to your machine learning model then uh, after you preprocess your data you do some feature selections where suppose if you have 10 columns as part of a data set you will just uh, and you require only five columns so you will remove five columns and focus on specific five columns only then model evaluation then you do the model evaluation and and you go ahead with your uh, training of model so this is a clear prompt that is what we signify over here then the third prompt is tell me about ai this is some kind of prompt uh, where it needs improvement and uh, let us know that what exactly we are looking for so these are the three kinds of example of categories a uh, classification categories i have given then i am going ahead and asking chat gpt to classify what kind of prompt it is clear unclear or needs improvement so this is a classification example that we are going to use so let me go ahead and run this so yeah it says the quality is clear the prompt is clear and it specifies a direct question regarding the impact of prompt engineering on ai models so when it is saying clear it is based on the response of ai how ai is understanding our prompt so this is how uh, we have classified whether our a prompt is clear or not so over here first there was a learning for the ai to understand uh, about what we are targeting for then we asked the ai to give us the output so it knows that what kind of output we are looking for based on the examples that we gave so that is in nutshell a few short point now we will go ahead and uh, talk about zero shot prompt so over here uh, in zero shot prompts means asking the ai to do something without giving it any examples as we did in few shot prompts it's like giving a student a test without teaching them first they have to figure out based on the question itself and in zero shot prompt the ai doesn't gets any hint or training like we do in few shot it just just needs to perform the task based on what it what it knows so over here in the previous example you saw i gave three examples that how you can translate a specific word into french but over here i am directly saying that translate this text to french which is a one shot uh, prompt so uh, let's understand this by some real time examples so what i can do is 
let me take you to my notepad where I have few important examples for you. So over here, what I am going to do is the first one is I am going to write a prompt which is going to summarize a book. Now, once I run this, then you will understand the beauty of one shot. So over here, we totally rely on the AI knowledge, whether that specific topic exists or not. So if I run this prompt, it has given you uh, the output for the same, right? But what if I said to you that Art of Prompt Engineering is not a book that I am aware of. I just came something random and it has given you the output based on the knowledge that the AI is trained upon. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same one. And as you can see over here, the Great Gatsby, this is the book which really exists. So I, right now I'm going to go ahead and say the Great Gatsby. Yes, this is the response that it gave because this book really exists. So zero shot prompt can be either you rely on AI or either you uh, give the right information and get it get it immediately uh, in one shot. Then let's see another example. Suppose if you are on a vegan diet and you want to get some uh, diet breakfast ideas. So what you can do is you can go ahead and run a few shot prompt and it is going to give you five different recipes so over here it is giving you overnight oats avocado toast smoothie bowl so that is how one shot prompt works it is very quick and it gives you knowledge on the data that it has been trained upon then the third one is create a to-do list so what we are doing over here is the student is preparing for his final exams in mathematics and we are asking uh, ai to generate a to-do list what it uh, what he has to prepare before going to the final exams and let's run it and see so it says that organize your study materials create study schedule key cons learn the key concepts work on weak areas you see so these are the all uh, examples that came as part of the uh, ai knowledge that it has and it's generated by default so now let's talk about uh, another example this example is a bit relevant to our topic because we are talking about prompt engineering and we are learning prompt engineering so what are the best practices for crafting a clear and effective prompts for natural language processing that is one of the uh, model which is used uh, to learn from the data and get the output so if i run this you can see it, it says that be specific and clear use simple and concise language and uh, provide context so whatever you see over here that this AI has provided you, I have covered everything in detail in my last video. So if you have not watched that video, go back and watch the first video where I'm talking about why you have to be specific and clear while writing your prompt, how you can use a concise language and tone, uh, how you can provide the context, how you can avoid the ambiguity. And this is covered in part of my last video. So that is what one shot prompt examples is. So now we understood what is few shot, we understood what is zero shot. So let's go ahead and now understand the key differences between them. So zero shot means, as I said, the AI has to figure out the task on its own. It's like solving a puzzle with no instruction. So right now I am a, a guy who knows about cloud computing, DevOps, machine learning, AI. But if you ask me about aerospace, I don't know anything about it. So the kind of knowledge that you don't have and you want to you know, uh, know about it, in that scenario use zero shot prompt then uh, few shot on the other hand gives the ai a few hints to follow so it can do the task more accurately so as i am a cloud computing engineer so i know what kind of responses i would be looking for and i have a few examples so if i want to get some accurate output first i will train my uh, ai with some examples that i'm aware of and then i will ask the ai to give me the output then zero shot is good when you want the ai to be flexible give uh, whatever output based on the knowledge that AI has and you have no idea about it uh, and uh, why few shot is better when you wanted to follow the pattern that you have shown so in this image you can see uh, we have categorized that what a few shot looks for that is we are giving a single task clear intent what we are looking for some examples and then we ask it to generate an output for us for zero shot single task no confused intent uh, no confused intent can be we ourselves don't know what exactly we are looking for so uh, that is what confused intent is we don't provide any uh, examples and we don't provide any list of uh, things that needs to be performed so that is zero task now let's go ahead and understand 
uh, when to use them. So, zero shot is great for tasks that AI hasn't seen before. It can handle general tasks like summarizing a story or answering a question. Zero shot is best when you want the AI to follow a certain pattern, like translating sentences, as we saw in our previous example, or categorizing data or classifying data, as we saw in our previous example where we were classifying whether the prompt is clear, unclear, or uh, needs improvement. Then, a zero shot is flexible, but few shot gives more accurate results because the AI has example to learn from. So that is what, uh, that is the scenarios when you can use it. So last but not the least, let's summarize what our learning was uh, as part of this tutorial, where uh, you can see that zero shot is great when you need the AI to quickly perform task with no setup. It's because it doesn't require training or examples as we are not providing any examples. Few shot is more accurate because the AI can learn from the examples you give and it's a bit slower compared to zero shot, but it gets the job done right for you in an accurate manner. So both are flexible uh, for different types of tasks. You just need to understand that when you have to use it. So thank you guys for watching and I hope this tutorial helped you get started with prompt engineering. If you find this video useful, don't forget to hit that like button and drop a comment below if you have any questions. I will try my level best to answer all of your questions and of course subscribe for more tips and tricks like this. Happy prompting and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.